Hello everyone, it is Commander C, and I'm doing a little bit of a different video today. As you might imagine, I have quite a lot of hours in this game. I've spent a lot of time playing it. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty well versed in how it works, so I thought I would make a tutorial. This one is going to be all about income, how to increase it, where it comes from, and how to decrease it. As well as just some tips and pointers for how everything works. So let's get started. Pretty much everything you need to know about your income, where it's being spent, how it's being made, can be found in this screen here where you hover your mouse over the actual bar that demonstrates what your balance is at the time. There are gold, shows your gold reserves, your investment pool, your different sources of income and your dis different sources of expenditure. First things first, taxes. As you might imagine, taxes are the primary way that a government makes money. You can also find a great deal in the budget tab, which is right here. You can press F2 to open it up if you have everything set to default. You can set taxation rates here. You can introduce new consumption taxes. You can really get into the spreadsheet meta and look at everything here, which is pretty much the same information that's already here. You can also increase government wages or decrease government wages or decrease military wages or increase military wages. There are several different kinds of taxation. Some are added on with new laws and some are removed with new laws. So for instance, right now we have per capita taxation starting out as Great Britain. This gives us 0.35 land tax. It also gives us per capita tax, income tax, and consumption tax. If we were to move to proportional taxation, it would remove the land tax entirely, which the land tax only applies to the peasantry, but it would increase the income tax rate and it would also add the dividends tax rate. For the most part in this game, you want to be going further down. You want to be getting closest to proportional taxation as possible. Proportional taxation will give you the most money because it taxes everyone mostly equally. You could go up to graduated taxation. This one is mainly taxing the rich people. This one per capita taxation is mostly taxing the factory workers. The land-based taxation is mostly taxing the peasantry because it has a high land tax rate. And consumption taxes only does consumption tax. A consumption tax is can be found in this screen here on the budget tab. Can be added for 100, 200, 300, or 500 authority. Basically, grain is the only one that requires 500 authority. These are basically tax rates, which... As applied by your taxation law, it is currently at 35%, as you can see right here, the 35% consumption tax rate. Consumption taxes are taxes placed on certain consumer goods. They do not apply to industrial goods. So for instance, a consumption tax on coal would tax coal being used by your population to heat their homes. It would not apply to coal being used in factories to fuel engines and whatnot. Currently, starting out as Great Britain, we have these consumption taxes on luxury clothes liquor tea and whatnot this they are currently at a consumption tax rate of 35 percent because that's what the base is as dictated by our taxation law so you can see that right here if i hover over the taxation level if i were to increase it it would increase the consumption tax rate to 42.5 percent other kinds of taxation are income taxes which are self-explanatory poll taxes consumption taxes and dividends taxes some consumption taxes are not a great idea such as grain because it will make that good more expensive and if it's a stable good that generally everyone uses such as either grain or groceries then people are going to get very very angry historically speaking taxing grain is not a good idea it also costs a great deal of authority you want to generally tax luxury goods that don't cost a lot of authority such as opium here which as most people will tell you, is not very necessary in daily life. And also liquor and tea are also good choices. Coming out as the United Kingdom, you have per capita taxation, which gives land tax, per capita tax, income tax, and consumption tax. Every single one of them gives consumption tax. The best way I can explain it is land base is basically just collected from the peasantry. So those are your unemployed people that are living in subsistence agriculture. As you can see, there's zero in the home countries right now. So there will be no land tax, which is being collected from this state. But if I move up to like Scotland, the lowlands to be exact, I go to subsistence farms. This is completely maxed out. We'd be making a great deal of land tax over here. If I were to hover over the building, look at the tooltip here, you can see exactly what kind of taxes you're making. I should mention that land tax is considered a poll tax. A poll tax is essentially a tax that does not scale with income as income tax does and it only applies to the lower strata and rich people do not pay poll taxes so if we look back at these subsistence farms and you go to workforce 
then to aristocrats and then you click on the picture you can see the people working in this specific building and you can see since they are aristocrats they are part of the higher strata if you go over here to weekly pop expenses you can see the different kind of taxes we're taking away from them you can see that there is no land tax here but if i moved over to the peasant population you can see that there is a land tax the last kind of taxes is dividends tax Unless you have proportional taxation or graduate taxation, you will not have dividends tax. What this essentially does is tax the profits of a business. So if we were to go back to the lowlands and look at specifically these food industries, currently they are have a weekly balance of plus 1.63k pounds. So ownership share dividends is 1.3 thousand pounds. This would be what that tax is taxing. And since rich people don't pay poll taxes. This is basically the main way of taxing the rich people. So those are the different kinds of taxation set out. You can set the level of taxation here. There's only five different options. I'd like to see it be like a slider, but this is what we have in the game right now. If you set up the taxes all the way, you will gain, as you can see, I've gained about 50K. I've gained a lot more income. However, there are a lot of nasty effects that come with having very high taxes, such as minus 10 legitimacy, plus 50% radicals from standard of living decreases, and this is already gonna cause a standard of living decrease amongst most of your population because they will have less spending money and won't be able to buy as much stuff. So it's already going to increase the amount of radicals in your country because their standard of living is gonna be decreasing, but because you have high taxation, it's gonna increase that amount by 50%, which is a lot. Well, it'll also make your people 20% less likely to join an interest group, which is currently part of the government. So currently, the interest groups in the government are the industrialists and the bourgeoisie. This will make your population 20% less likely to become part of either of those interest groups. On the other side of the spectrum, there is very low taxes, which gives you minus 20% radicals for standard of living decreases and plus 10 legitimacy. It will also increase your standard of living for most of your people a little bit because they will be paying less taxes and therefore will have more spending money. Whilst having high taxes will give you a lot more income, I do not recommend having it like that for a very long amount of time, only in cases of emergency, because as I said, it will create some very nasty effects. Another form of income that your government will make will be tariffs. As long as you don't have isolationism or free trade. Free trade removes all tariffs and isolationism makes it so that you cannot trade which is over here in the trade policy. These will affect the rate in which your tariffs are applied, protectionism and mercantilism. So we are importing a great deal of silk from the Chinese and we are making 2.69K pounds from that trade because we have an import tariff on it. If we go back to the budget tab and you hover over the amount of money you're making on tariffs, you can see a breakdown of what you're making it from. So you make money from imports and exports. It's a percentage amount. In this case, we have protectionism, which gives 10% tariff on exports and import. Similarly, we are making 2.9K from the export of opium because we have a tariff on it. Keep in mind, tariffs can be a significant source of income, but each trade route itself does not give you a lot of money from tariffs. As you, so you can see, for most of these, it is significantly less than a thousand and some of which are less than a hundred. The only reason we are making a lot of money off of opium and silk is because we are just exporting and importing such a large quantity of it. I should also mention that if you go to a trade center building, which handles that trade, in this case, this trade center in the home countries handles both the opium and the silk trade, having tariffs will make these buildings less profitable, as you can see down here under trade revenue if you want to read this tooltip. Another big thing with tariffs is if we look at the export of opium to China, it'll make the level a lot less likely to grow because it'll be less profitable for the people that are trading. So if we hover over here to the level, you can see because of tariffs, it will not be profitable enough to grow to the next level. So if you have tariffs, your trade routes are going to be exporting less and importing less which can be very significant, especially if you're trading for a specific resource, such as Sweden, which doesn't have a lot of coal, you'd probably have to import a lot of coal. So you'd want to have as few tariffs on that as possible. One way to manipulate tariffs is if we go to the market tab, we can go to opium export, we can right click on it, and you can set the policy. 
So no priority is the default. That will give us 10% and 10%, as I mentioned earlier, because of our protectionist policy. However, we can set it to protect domestic supply and encourage exports, which will change it. Encouraging exports will remove the export tariff, but it will also make a 30% input tariff. Similarly, with protect domestic supply, it will remove the import tariff, but it will make an export tariff of 30%. So that's tariffs explained. The next major source of income is minting. Minting, for the most part, cannot be changed by the player. Minting is a source of income which scales directly with your GDP. The one thing the player can do to manipulate minting is if I were to switch to Spain, for example. Spain has four gold mines in Astorias as you can see here. Now, these are the only buildings in the game which give you minting as an output. As you can see right now, they are giving the Spanish 2,060 pounds in minting. And you can see that in the breakdown right here. So increasing your GDP will increase the amount of money you are making in minting, while if your GDP decreases, then you'll make less money on minting. One of the other main sources of income is diplomatic packs, and Britain is a good way to demonstrate how this works because they have a lot of puppets and dominions. There are four different ways to make income with diplomatic packs. The first two are pretty much the same, puppets and dominions. For instance, if I were to look at the East India Company right now, they are currently, as we can see here in diplomacy, they are a dominion of the United Kingdom. So they are going to be giving us 10% of their income. Puppets give you 20%. And we can see here, they're giving us 28.1K. This is generally a good source of income, but a lot of times puppets can fall apart later in the game and they'll have constant uprisings. So it does start to fall off later in the game. If you don't have any problems with the revolts and whatnot, it is a steady source of income that you don't have to manage. Two other ways that you can get money from diplomatic packs is one through war reparations, wherein in a war, if you get the war reparations goal, that country will give you 10% of their government income to you for a set period of time. I don't remember exactly how long it is though. The final way to make money with diplomatic packs is through bankrolling. So as Great Britain, I started bankrolling Prussia and you can see here in diplomatic packs, I'm currently making 17.5K from that bankroll. If you don't know, bankrolling is basically when one country just sort of injects money into another nation and it will increase their relations with you and also have a very small chance of giving you an obligation from them but it's a very very small chance it's 0.2 percent chance every week i believe last source of income is government dividends this really only applies to command economies and collective ownership economies however there is one exception for any other government type you can go to railways and set them to government run as i have this will give them government shares that means a portion of their dividends will go to the government as opposed to the owners. So if I let the game buy a little bit, this should update. And if we go over here to government dividends, we're currently making 21K off of government dividends because we have, because we own a share of the railways in our country and our railways are currently making a profit. So that's how you make money. We're going to now go over how you spend money. The major things you're going to be spending money on are going to be goods for government buildings. So that's your ports, your government administration. There's also going to be wages in government buildings. So those are the people working in your government administration and your ports and whatnot. And also in your railways if they are set to government owned. You're also going to be paying for the goods in military buildings. So that's your guns, your ammunition and such. And also opium tools and cloth if you have field hospitals and a few other things but that's basically just there's also going to be military wages so paying the soldiers and the officers and whatnot there's also going to be welfare payments but a lot of countries do not have this britain does specifically because they have poor laws as you can see right here under welfare I believe China also has some, but I think that's for the most part kind of it. Construction goods is going to be the first one that I'm going to look at. So construction is based off of the points up here in the construction queue. So think of it as every point on average will cost right around 1.2K for construction, but it does vary a lot. So don't, don't take that to heart. As you can see, so if iron becomes less expensive, then the cost of construction will go down. Because iron is relatively cheap right now, you can see that this construction sector 
is making minus 14k as opposed to 15k like i mentioned earlier that's because iron is inexpensive so on the topic of construction let's discuss the investment pool investment pool got a major rework recently with a new update which added private construction the investment pool is based off of your economic law and everyone sort of contributes it used to be only capitalists or aristocrats depending on your economic model now i believe it's for the most part everyone but at different levels of efficiency depending on your economic law the investment pool for instance, we have interventionism. Most countries start out with interventionism, Britain, France, America. This allocates 50% of the construct of the investment pool to government construction and 50% to private construction. Private construction is not paid for by the player and is mostly generated by a the AI. These this is supposed to represent your population building stuff on their own. 50% of this is going to be used for the government constructing things. So if I were to go here, let's say I want to build a rye farm in the midlands look over here half of the payment that is going to be required to construct this building is going to be paid for by the investment pool now it is very difficult to utilize the investment pool fully as the player this is because you have to have enough construction to construct everything so for instance if you don't want to construct anything at the moment you want to have private construction just go and do whatever it wants theoretically you construct a whole lot of construction sectors and then just let them do whatever they want. But then when you construct your building, it's going to be a lot more expensive if you have a large queue because you'll be constructing a lot more. This is because you are only using 50% of the investment pool. So you'll still have to pay for half of it. So if you don't want to go into debt, you'll likely not be able to use the entire investment pool at once. I hope that makes sense. To demonstrate this, I have put an obnoxious amount of rye farms into the construction queue. We're going to let a week tick by. As you can see, 100% of the investment pool is not being used. That is because we do not have enough construction sectors to utilize all of it at once. Remember, private construction uses the government construction sectors. So if I do want to utilize the investment pool fully, I'll have to build a lot more construction sectors. So I'm going to go to Home Countries, hit, hold down Alt, and then click this. So that goes to the top of the queue, as you can see here. Gonna let the game tick by, gonna let those construct. As you can see, now that we've drastically increased the amount of construction sectors we have, we are using a lot more of the investment pool. And if I were to switch, pause all of the government construction, then this is gonna go into the negatives, because now all of these construction sectors are being used for private construction. And private construction uses only the investment pool. You can see that since we constructed all those construction sectors, our government income has gone down a lot, though. So unless you have a lot of extra money to throw around, you're very likely not going to be able to use the entire investment pool unless you pause and unpause and let construction, private construction do its thing. Well, the largest amounts of government spending there's going to be is goods for government buildings and government wages. These are the amount, government wages are the amount that your bureaucrats and the people working at your ports are being paid. You can increase this and decrease those by going to your budget and similarly to the taxation levels you can increase or decrease it here and gain the following effects goods for government buildings for instance for government administration is going to be paper so we can go to the home counties right here where we have 10 government administration buildings we can see that it is currently producing a deficit of 13.6k if paper was cheaper then this number would go well, it would go up, but it, it would shrink. That would be because we are spending less money on paper. Universities as well are very, very similar. They also get their money from the government and use paper. So if we have more inexpensive paper, then this amount will go down. Clearly with government administration, the further down you go, the more bureaucracy you'll get, but the more paper you will require. And if you go all the way down to telephone switchboards, you'll actually need telephones, which is a very late game item. Ports are the last building which are paid for by the government and they consume clippers, but that is it. Take note, if you change the production method to industrial ports, then it'll no longer require clippers, it'll require steamships. Shockingly, a very large amount of your government income is gonna be spent on the army very likely. These are going to be spent on goods for government buildings and go military wages, similarly to, mil to government wages and goods for government buildings. And the amount of wages you spend on your soldiers can be changed here as well and gain the following effects. If we go back to the barracks in the home countries, we can see we have 15 barracks and it is currently making a deficit of 
minus 4.83k. If we were to have less expensive artillery, less expensive small arms, or less expensive ammunition, then this amount would decrease. Keep in mind, if you have, if you don't have enough artillery or small arms, you have an input good shortage, this is gonna decrease your offense and defense. This isn't super important, but I do wanna mention that barracks do in fact pay taxes because the soldiers do pay taxes, but it's nowhere near enough to cover the amount that this building is gonna drain from your treasury. Most countries won't have to think about this, but welfare payments is another source of a drainage for your treasury. If we go into politics, go to laws, go to welfare payments, we can see that we, as Great Britain, start out with poor laws. This is going to do 20% welfare payments, and this can be increased and decreased in the institution levels. So if we increase it by one, it's going to double the percentage of welfare payments. But how does welfare work? Well, it's very complicated. So everyone in your country is eligible for welfare payments. How welfare payments work is it's basically an amount that is given from your treasury to your people who are making below the minimum wage, or in this case, it's called the normal wage. You can check what the normal wage is because that is going to be the base for your government wages. So currently, the average wage is 5.52. So any person that's making five less than 5.52 is going to get welfare payments. And by everyone, I mean only 20% because we only had the first level of social security. But for instance, if everyone in your country is somehow making above the minimum wage, then you will be paying no money for welfare payments. Whilst welfare payments do sound good, and they sound very nice to have, keep in mind, this is not real life and this is a computer game, and welfare payments have very little effect. So I generally don't invest in them. There's three more things I want to go over for government spending. Diplomatic packs, interest, and subsidies. Diplomatic packs, I already explained it in government income. It's basically the opposite of that. So if you are a puppet of another country, you're going to be giving 20% of your income to your overlord. So if I were to switch to East India Company, I can see right here that I am making minus 32.9k because I am a dominion and I'm giving Great Britain 10% of my government income. Interest only applies when you're in debt. It is an interest rate that you pay to the people that are loaning you money in your country. So if you have more debt, then you're gonna be paying more in interest. So to demonstrate this, I've, I'm accumulating an enormous amount of debt. I already have a million in credit. I'm gonna pause the game. You can see right now, I am now spending 1.7k in interest so interest is going to be paid to the wealthy people in my country which are lending money that goes to my credit and until all this is paid off i'm going to be paying interest on that the more debt i have the more i'm going to pay in interest final source of expenditure i want to look at is subsidies so subsidies do basically what they do in real life so if i were to go to this glass work and i was going to hit the subsidize button which is right here then it's going to subsidize it. So if it goes into the negative balance, then funds will be taken from the treasury and put into this building so that it keeps everyone employed and keeps running. This isn't a great example because it is not in, it is in a positive balance. So I'm gonna pick another one, which is not. This money will not increase the cash reserves, but it will simply keep the business open. This can be very useful in cases where you need to have a certain product such as with chemical plants maybe explosives you need a lot of explosives but it's not profitable enough to have enough explosives so you can subsidize it to do that the main thing that you're going to be subsidizing in this game is going to be railways so that you can keep your infrastructure up it's it auto subsidizes actually whenever you build one as an example i want to look at this chemical plant currently it is making minus 210 pounds if I were to subsidize it, it would inject 200 pounds into it and it will expand fully, increasing the amount that we are going to subsidize it. One way this could be useful, similarly to in real life, is you could subsidize your food industries to keep food cheap for your population, which will make them very, very happy. So those are all the major sources of income in the game and all the major sources of expenditure. So hopefully this will help you balance out your budget in future games. But that's going to be the end of the video. If you liked the video, then please like the video. Also consider subscribing and let me know in the comments if you want to see more tutorials like this one. That's it. Bye.